today's video is going to be a little bit special. I'm currently stood underneath or inside a TBM tunnel boring machine, which within the last 20 minutes has been turned on to start its drive from uh, West Ryslip towards Old Oak Common. It's going to be a five mile long tunnel eventually, and it's going to be excavating about 18 metres a day. Uh, it's going to take about two years to complete that tunnel. This one's just been turned on. The, the other one to the side, I think it's been on for a couple of weeks and that's excavated 70 metres of the five mile long tunnel already. Just hoping to get loads of shots of the TBMs in action. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the actual tunnels and the TBMs themselves. Stepping onto a TBM for the first time was a little bit daunting given being perfectly honest, so to begin with it was difficult to know where to start. Even though it certainly wasn't my first visit to an active construction site, it was the first time I've been allowed on board a TBM and one that was about to be switched on for the first time as well. But to begin with there's probably nobody better qualified to explain a little bit about the TBM than the man in charge of tunnelling for the SCS joint venture. Hello, my name is Michael Kreiner. I'm the tunnel lead for the SDS joint venture performing here the London tunnels. Um, we are currently at our West Loislip drive site where we just today launched our second TBM with the name Caroline. After a few weeks ago, we have been launching our first TBM, Sushila. So we are in the western part of London. Um, our first TBMs of the joint venture are heading towards the inner city. Both TBMs that we have got over here have got a journey of eight kilometers of uh, work to do. The TBMs are erecting the lining that builds afterwards the tunnel with so-called segments. Seven single segments form a ring. So the life cycle or the production cycle of the tunneling activities with the mechanized tunneling that we use here um, with the tunnel boring machines is that the TBM advances always 1 meter 90. When the space is then created, the ring is built. The ring is built out of seven single segments. These segments are erected, form the ring, and the, the TBM pushes itself against that ring further. And so, slowly but steadily, it is making its journey underground into the London uh, urban city area. So to the back of you, you see the first two TBMs that we launch. We've got several more to go. That one is heading direction to the east into London. The end point of these two TBMs is uh, our ventilation shaft called Green Parkway, which is a eight kilometer distance from over here. So these TBMs are forming part of the greater scheme that we are doing here in London Tunnels. And we are very proud that after long year, years of work, which involves a very big team from the client side, from uh, the joint venture side, from stakeholders, joining in, creating that program. And uh, it's key that all people are working together, that we need to, uh, that we have got also the collaboration because such grand schemes require a lot of coordination, especially in the urban tunneling. We have got several interfaces to address. I think we've been working long time all together. And now we see uh, the first TBMs in operation, which makes everybody proud. I think Michael managed to cover most of the main points and I'm very grateful for his time and I thank him for that. As he mentioned, the machines will be constructing a pair of 8km or 5 mile long tunnels from West Ryslip heading eastwards towards central London. Each TBM has a 9.8m diameter cutting head and will leave behind a tunnel with an internal diameter of 89 meters, which takes into account the thickness of the concrete rings that form the walls of the tunnel. The 140 meter long 2000 ton machines are excavating part of a much longer 8.4 mile or 13.5 kilometer tunnel that will eventually reach the Victoria crossover box just to the west of Old Oak Common. Another pair of TBMs will be launched from the Victoria crossover box to begin their journey west towards the Green Parkway ventilation shaft. Once the four TBMs reach the ventilation shaft, they'll be dismantled and brought to the surface. I'm not sure if they'll be used again for other tunnels or if that'll be the end of their tunnel boring careers. 
So now we know where Caroline is headed, I thought I'd try and explain a little bit about how tunnel boring machines actually work. But before I do that, I think it'd be remiss of me not to show you the moment that Caroline was actually switched on for the first time. So here's the moment the HS2 civil director, Mike Lyon, switched on the TVM. Excellent. We have movement. There you go, you can, you can see on the screen. Yes. Five millimetres per minute, seven increasing. So we, we're moving, the TBM, you feel the vibration of the TBM started? We're off. What a, what a great moment. Yeah. You know, the momentum continues as we sort of drive our second TBM into London, the fifth TBM now on HS2. You know, yeah. I've been round the site this morning. Absolutely fantastic site. You know, I think at HS2 overall, We've got something like 28,000 people now working on the project, so it's just amazing. That's generated over 250 businesses that are working here, and we're nearly up to a thousand apprentices. So, young people coming into our industry, you know, striving to sort of you know use this great technology, start their career. What, a, what an amazing project! So that was the actual moment Caroline was switched on to begin a two year long journey towards Green Parkway. Now to talk briefly about how TBMs work, I know Michael did a great job of explaining how the tunnel will be constructed, but I thought a quick animation may help explain it a bit better for the uninitiated, as I know just from looking at the machines it's not always immediately apparent how they work. As Michael explained, the cut head moves forward using hydraulic rams, and once it is excavated 1.9 metres off the tunnel, a set of seven rings, each weighing approximately eight tonnes, are moved into place. This is done with a remote controlled arm that uses suction to pick up each of the concrete segments and place them into position. Once the ring is constructed, the TVM pushes off of that ring using hydraulic rams to excavate another 1.9 metre section of the tunnel. Once the machine is up to speed, it is hoped that the tunnelers will be able to construct up to 9 tunnel rings per day, meaning Caroline will progress roughly 18 metres per day. The excavated material is removed from the back of the cutter head by augers, the hydraulic motors of which can be seen in this clip. The material is then transported along the length of the TBM and the tunnel using conveyors. As the TBM progresses forward, the conveyor system is lengthened and new sections of ventilation ducting are added. The spoil, as it's called, that is deposited outside the tunnel will be used to remodel the golf course on which the West Ryslip site is currently situated, and some of the spoil will travel north along the HS2 route to be used for landscaping other sections of the line. The ring segments for Caroline and Sushila are being manufactured at a site on the Isle of Grain in Kent and delivered by road. However, the ring segments for the next four TBMs to be launched will be made in Hartlepool by Strabag and delivered to the logistics hub in Wilsdon via rail. So that was the moment Caroline was switched on to begin her journey eastwards and a little bit of information about how TBMs work. I hope I've managed to explain it reasonably well and if you have found this video informative please do hit that like button, drop a comment in the comment section below and consider subscribing, it really would be appreciated. But I'm going to leave it there for today, say until next time, bye bye.